Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. We're going to talk about the Parrot family of camera drones and that's from the original Bebop 3.0 as it was known. I never knew what that meant. I thought it was a Bebop 1 by most people's descriptions. And the Bebop 2 which then came after the Bebop 1 of course. Great improvement upon that original design and now the Anafi or Anafi as it is pronounced apparently in France. So let me give you a little look-see at what the Bebop 1 or 3.0 as it was originally known looks like. And I have added all sorts of different modifications to it. Usually you're not supposed to fly these with the little um, propeller protectors. They get caught in the wind and can cause all sorts of problems. Those are meant basically for indoor work. And if you're flying in a big gymnasium and you're just demonstrating what the copter can do, then go ahead and put the bumper guards on it, but really not for the outside world. And so you just have to be very careful when you fly. Now, this has GPS lock and many functions that are actually quite advanced for what this drone actually is. There is no optical avoidance of any sort. So don't compare it to any DJI products out there. You better know where you're flying. And if you bang into something, that's your fault. Okay, that's on you, not on the drone. Assuming that you did all the preliminary calibrations correctly prior to taking off and that you locked onto sufficient number of satellites to keep your position locked if you just hover. Now, this has a camera that is a little bit unusual. I have a filter here hooked onto it, but I cannot show you unless I take that filter out. The reason I have this is not necessarily just to have filtration, but to protect that 180 degree angle camera. It's fisheye and it extends beyond the nose. And so what happens is if you run into something, a bush, a tree, you will scratch that lens. That is not a cheap little replacement. It will cost you almost as much as a new one of these nowadays. This used to be about $400 with the Sky Controller 1. Now, again, you could get refurbished units for like $90. I found a very rare offer, basically sealed in box units for like, I think it was $79. So yes, great drone to start out with. Again, it does extremely, extremely good 1080p fully stabilized electronically because it does not have a gimbal. So all of that bumps and angle changes are taken care of by the internal electronic stabilization. And unless you do something really drastic, you will get a very smooth flight. In fact, it's nothing short of amazing. And you can go back and look at my videos of the Bebop 1 and see what I'm talking about. Let's put that aside and jump over to the Bebop 2. Okay, so the Bebop 2 came out shortly after the Bebop 1. And you can immediately see that I have the bumper guards attached. And that is because these are not really bulky like the ones for the Bebop 1. And they do not get affected by any kind of wind. And of course, they prevent those propellers from getting banged. I also have leg extenders attached. They're very rubbery, very soft. And the reason for that is these birds do not land gently okay they do not now the camera characteristics are basically the same got that bulging out lens the 180 degree fisheye and again the same quality in fact a little bit better than the bebop one all right so that's enough about those birds these are great again you can get these for just over 200 refurbished the complete pack including sky controller 2 and you're ready basically to fly now let's go ahead and look at the anafi and then we'll begin to uh, show you the video and again it's just a very boring video it's going to be the full length real time but i'm going to go ahead and keep you awake by giving you some specs and my viewpoints what i think about the anafi it basically comes in a little box like this look at that compared to this okay there's really no way that you're going to pop that in a backpack and not hurt something not bend the propellers or something unless you have a special backpack 
that is molded for that drone. I have a big carrying case, but that doesn't make it very uh, portable. Here it is. That's all you get. And of course, the controller is next door. And I do have a little carry bag and it has a couple of straps that you can hook up around your shoulders. But again, extremely easy to carry. Now, before I get too carried away with this, I'm going to tell you that the Anafi Thermal that just recently came out, because what happened? Parrot has left the so-called hobby drone industry and have moved up over to the more professional side of things. And so they have this model, then they have the Anafi Thermal. And now they just came out with a kit called the Anafi FPV, first person view. And it is meant for you to be flying around like most of those guys that that you see doing those crazy maneuvers, except this is not a drone to be performing crazy maneuvers. But there are so many different functions that you can perform. Pretty much of them are all automatically controlled by the application and the internal computer. So let's go ahead and open this bad boy. And I, if you take a look very, very closely here, I have motor covers. And these are kind of controversial because people think they're going to overheat the motor. But you know what? I took temperature measurements before and after that long flight that I'm going to put you guys through. And there were no discernible increases in overall motor temperature. So I'm sold. Now, another accessory that I bought, and I also have the prop protectors as well as leg extensions in the case but this is the niftiest little product right here it just attaches right to the front of your gimbal you then take the lens cover off it's a little tight there are also uh, filters that you can buy from freewell that fit perfectly and actually do not prevent the calibration of the gimbal from taking place like some other heavier filters might. So you slip the battery in place. Of course, right here is the micro SD card. It's a super high speed, high data transfer card because we're shooting 4K 30 video, 30 frames per second. We don't want any kind of glitches while the data is being transferred. Insert the battery, it is a secure lock. The battery is a smart battery. And after you perform your calibrations, you can actually load a map in the application if you're going to a new area. I always like to preload a map. And so I do that and I go ahead and make sure that my settings are correct. And I go ahead and take off and enjoy the living daylights out of this little bird. This little thing looks like it just really will not perform as you can imagine, but it does. So anyway, let's get to the video and I'm going to go ahead and start reading you the specs on this little bird, the parrot and Afi. So we'll be back in a few seconds. Alrighty, so we are back. You are now viewing the video where I'm just gonna simply hover and gently fly around. There should be a counter telling you exactly what the time frame or time code is as we go through the video and I want you guys to keep an eye on the performance of the GPS lock see how steady it is anything that you see as far as motion basically I did okay so it, it is that amazing it's much better than the Bebop 2 which to me was pretty good to begin with not as good as the Bebop 1 of course that's why they had these progressions of these models all right so let's quickly go look at the specs uh, the Anafi has a one and a half point four I don't know why they use that measurement like that but it's one and a half point four CMOS sensor from Sony along with a wide-angle 2.4 a spherical lens in addition to the 21 megapixel tilt shots it can shoot video in 1080p at 60 frames per second, 4K at 30 frames per second. And by the way, the 4K is 3840 by 2160 or cinematic 4K at 4096 by 20 
160. I have yet to try that, and that is at 24 frames per second for that so-called Hollywood look. All right. So as you can imagine, this little drone selling for just over 500 uh, carries quite a list of specifications that are really mostly associated with drones costing at least twice that much. So here are a few of the full camera specs. Again, like I said, the one and a half by 1.5.4 inch 21 megapixel sensor, the 2.4 23 millimeter lens, and is 26 millimeters when you shoot video. And we'll touch on that a little bit later, the reason for that. It's got ISO adjustments from 100 to 3200, shutter speed from one second to one ten thousandth of a second. The resolutions available, 4K cinema, again, as I said before, 1496 by 2160, 24 FPS or 4K UHD, that's 3840 by 2160 at 24, 25 and or 30 FPS. Then you have 1920 by 480 at 24, 25, 30, 48, 50 and 60 frames per second. The bit rate is a maximum at 100 megabits per second and it shoots raw DNG files and P-Log post-production formats. P-Log is an interesting format. It's a very flat color profile, which you can do wonders with later on during post-processing. Coffee break right now, hold on. And they go on to say, while this is undoubtedly the best drone that Parrot has ever made, there are a few things I wish they could improve on. Not only the slow yawing speed and the lack of multiple battery chargers in an extended pack. Well, there is actually a third party charger that you can order, works great. It charges these batteries without any problem. In fact, the batteries themselves simply use a USB-C connector to charge them, just like many of the Android phones do. And so you don't have to deal with a specific type of charger. You might wonder, well, is it gonna balance charge my battery? Apparently, yes. That's internal circuitry that takes care of that inside these smart batteries. So yes, there is a bank that you can buy. It's a three compartment bank. You can stick, uh, you can load three batteries at once and charge them all at the same time. Now, this may take longer than simply charging one. There's also a USB plug on the side for you to then charge your controller and another plug for you to charge your phone simultaneously all at once. So you are ready to go within a few hours. So, as you can see, this puppy is flying beautifully. We're not gonna get into the flight functions for this because really it's sort of immaterial at this point. I am operating the gimbal, which by the way, did I not tell you that the gimbal goes straight up 90 degrees? And this exceeds the angle of any drone that I know of. You can adjust the rate at which the gimbal moves so that even when you press the lever all the way up or all the way down, it will only move at a very specific rate, either slow or fast. You can also adjust that by the amount of pressure you apply on the lever. So you set it at a specific maximum travel and then very gradually you can go from dead stop to whatever speed you set it at and have that very, very gradual gimbal adjustment so that you can do that beautiful reveal shot as you raise the drone up in the air. One of the unusual things that you could do is to basically take a picture straight up at the sky. Imagine if a jet plane was to fly across your field of view while you're hovering, say even 20 feet up in the air, you'll be looking straight up at the sky. 
I don't think there's anything else out there that would allow you to do that. Other functions that you can perform with that feature is to basically, if you are a professional drone pilot and you're doing inspection of high power lines, you can literally just get underneath that set of components and look at them, inspect them at an angle instead of having to uh, rely on just a horizontal view or a downward angle from a higher altitude. I think that's great. As you can see here, I'm maneuvering the gimbal a bit. And I'm just, just sitting here hovering. We are at seven minutes and a half almost. And at this point, you know, I was looking at my battery levels and I was going, wait a minute, we're at like 82% or something like that. I don't remember, but it was really getting a little bit weird because I thought this can't be happening. Uh, my levels should be dropping. But anyway, I just kept on flying. I did not want to bring it down because all parrot drones begin recording automatically. So if you bring it down, you're going to stop the recording process. You would have to start again. And just the act of taking off uh, does use a little bit of battery power. Coffee break. Now, I set the recording mode to P-Log. And again, this is a very, very flat look. I know that some of the higher end um, GoPro cameras have a similar mode where you can then add whatever amount of adjustments, contrast, saturation, brightness, and curves, as well as LUTs or lookup tables to get just that look that you're after. So this is just a normal look. I didn't really do anything too fancy. Just increase contrast a tiny bit and saturation and a bit of sharpness. So this is the regular 4K 30 frames per second, not the cinematic, slightly wider look. Uh, actually, it's a little bit more horizontal resolution and the same vertical resolution. We're gonna try that later on. And again, I'm just yawing around. I set the yaw rate to only about 10 degrees per second. So nothing too wild, nothing too fast. You want this, you want this. Guys out there that enjoy that high flying, very fast, crazy flying, your videos are gonna look horrible. Believe me, your videos are gonna look horrible. They're not gonna have that smooth cinematic look and you need to do that. You need to bring down your speed. You need to bring down your motion rates so that you have a very smooth transition from say going straight and beginning to curve to the right or to the left. Please don't mind my horrible backyard. It looks horrendous today, but I went ahead and finally mowed my grass. I've been suffering from back pain, and so it's been a little bit hard for me to tack tackle that kind of work. I am um, gonna have to just hire somebody to do that from now on. I'm getting too old for this. Anyway, so as you can see, it's just looking at me. I'm playing around with the controls because you know, looking at you reverses everything. So, I still need a little bit of practice for that. Now, one thing that you could do, and you can do that with just about any other drone as well. You can set your, your, your limits. And before I describe that, look what I'm doing. I am rotating to the left, I am raising the gimbal, and I am backing up and gaining altitude at the same time. So that's some of the little functions that you need to practice. And I'm getting a little bit so, so good about it, you know, so, so good uh, performing this kind of uh, adjustments or fly modes manually. Of course, you can kind of program this through the application, but I want to learn how to do this manually. So anyway, the units nowadays, the applications provide you with the ability to set a geofence, which means that the drone will not go beyond a certain distance from your startup point or your takeoff point. Sometimes it's from your controller but most of the time it's from the recorded takeoff point. And so it might be 30 meters out. So you got a kind of a circle around you 
that the uh, drone will not go beyond and also you can set a certain altitude that the drone will simply will not go beyond that and you'll get a warning on your application telling you you have exceeded those distances and if you have it set correctly it'll just not move beyond that one thing you have to remember you have to be very very careful if you do set a distance uh, so-called minimal distance geofence is don't take the drone for a walk like I do because you'll reach that geofence is remember it's from the point you took off not where you're standing now with your controller so you might have reached that point and all of a sudden the drone looks like it's not responding to your control yeah so make sure that when you take your drone for a walk you're out in the field and you want to go follow it along make sure you disable your geofence or at least set it to a relatively long distance one that will cover whatever length uh you know around that field you plan to walk your drone around and i use that term because i love to walk the drone around areas i get behind it and i'll go around trees i'll go down a path i'll follow a creek you know i'll do all sorts of things and basically just to get practice maneuvering the drone in relatively tight quarters of course don't do that when you're beginning to learn how to fly just pick a nice big wide area where nothing will be hit if you lose control of the drone that's the only thing that i can suggest and make sure make doubly sure that you let the drone lock to satellites before you perform your compass calibrations and level calibrations in this case this drone has the ability to set your level your horizon either up and down and also laterally so it's really great make sure that you have an area for location a surface that is flat there are apps that you can load on your phone to check your level anywhere you are at so make sure that where you set that drone down to set that horizon level adjustment that it is in fact level then perform your calibration i like to always point the drone to the north when i do that and the calibration for this one is relatively simple make sure that you have a sufficiently high speed um, micro sd card in your drone if you plan to record video or photographs because again 100 megabit per second you better have a card that can handle that kind of a data transfer rate coffee time All right, so right now we are nearing almost 50 minutes, 14 and a half just now. And I looked at my battery levels and I just could not believe what I was seeing. I was seeing about 60%. And so that was freaking me out a little bit. Are these batteries working correctly? What is going on? Well, I just continued flying. It kind of reminded me of the Bebop 2 with a special third party high milliamp per hour rating that I purchased from my Bebop. And again, the Power Edition batteries have a higher rating than the regular Bebop 2 batteries. And I was getting a good 23 minutes with the regular Power batteries. And then I loaded up that third party uh, 4,000 milliamp per hour. And all of a sudden I got something like 26 minutes of just hover flight which is quite amazing. Of course, that will not happen if you're fighting the wind, if you are recording, if you are flying and, you know, uh, doing some uh, heavy duty maneuvers or whatever, anything that's gonna be stressful that will cause the motors to have to change RPM abruptly to allow you to perform these motions or these functions will draw power from your battery a lot faster than just a gentle flight. So climbing at a rapid rate, sport mode, that type of flying will drain your battery a lot faster than just simply doing what I'm doing here, which is, again, boring flying. Of course, that's not what we really want to do, but this is a test that you really should perform before you go seriously out to some area that maybe is a one in a lifetime type visit and you don't want to mess up. You don't want to run out of power. You don't want to go out too far and then not have sufficient power to come back home. Again, it depends on your drone. It depends on your uh, drone's uh, power draw. 
so now we're at 16 and a half minutes and again super boring flight we're just again we're burning down the battery that's the whole goal here and we don't want to do something crazy and fly around and you know acceleration rates and all of that stuff that will not give me a so-called um, idea of what the battery can do because remember you guys when you have that rating that they claim that's just doing this as well okay that's that's what they did to give you that oh this drone can fly 25 minutes uh they really didn't fly they just hovered so again and they probably were not even videotaping anything so i am recording 4k 30 frames per second and i think we're gonna pass 20 and at that point when i get there i'll have to remember what the actual battery power was at that point i believe it was like 30 percent and again i was like okay we're gonna we made it past 20 i wonder if we're gonna hit 25 well we didn't quite make it to 25. we will see at the end how long we actually were able to fly so again very gentle maneuvers i brought it real low one thing that you could do that is super cool that no one else can do no other machine no other drone can do is the follow me function follow me function you know what that means right everyone has that but what do you normally have to do you have to have your drone at a relatively decent altitude camera kind of tilted down toward you not this one this one can follow you at say three feet from the ground assuming you got a nice flat field because it doesn't know if a, you know the ground level is going to go up or down so you better be careful but it can actually follow you from below waist level let's just say and it's looking up at your head with the gimbal pointing up toward you. Isn't that amazing? I saw that demonstrated and it kind of blew my mind. It's kind of a gimmicky shot, but you know, again, something that no other drone that I know of can do. And now, what do I not like about this drone? Well, there are some things that I don't like about this drone. The fact that the micro SD card is held underneath the battery in a flat little compartment by the flimsiest of holders ever engineered probably half of the anafi owners that that sort of are in the habit of removing the sd card and popping it into a reader so they can transfer the video files to their computer end up breaking that little clamp and do you think parrot has replacement parts oh no they do not so what I do is I leave that card installed. It's a 128 high speed extreme card and um, I leave it installed and I just plug my C USB connector to it and pop it into my computer. I have to turn on the drone. It'll be recognized as a hard drive per se. I locate the folder and I transfer my files. That's it. I have to do that because I'm not taking a chance at breaking that little that little holder and then you can't shoot anything. You are stuck. And it has to literally go in for repair, believe me. So again, that's one of the super negative aspects of it. Another one is the fact that the legs, the arms per se, at the end are extremely flimsy and flexible. The motors themselves are small, the propellers are very lightweight, but then the drone is also very lightweight, so it doesn't really require any more power than it already has. However, the legs, the arms are so flexible, you can literally twist them just by very gentle pressure. Now, that may be a positive if you have a little mishap. Well, I'd rather have a stronger set of arms. So the Anafi FPB and the Anafi Thermal have a redesigned set of arms. The same body, but the arms are redesigned they actually move the extension of the legs right under the motor pods and stiffen the legs to the point where they just don't twist when you try even at medium pressure. So that actually makes the drone a lot stronger and it only, I believe, increased weight by like two grams. It's only just over 300 grams anyway. So it's just barely over the limit for FAA registration as it is. So yeah, those are my two main uh, problems with it. I really don't have any other problems that I can come up with. 
except the batteries are not cheap they're a hundred dollars a piece 98 dollars if you're lucky you can get everything that you need over at best buy so that is one big advantage over other brands i suppose um I don't know whether Walmart carries this brand or not. And of course you can buy it off of Amazon. They have a very good return policy. So again, probably one of the safest places to purchase one of these drones. Well, I don't know if you have seen any of my previous videos featuring the Anafi or the Parrot 2 or the Parrot 1. But if you have not, please go look at my drone playlist and just spend some time viewing what I have been able to do with these birds. And again, these are all underdogs compared to DJI, but I'm sure that you will admit that I have been able to do some pretty amazing things with these. At the end of this video, I'm gonna come back full screen and I'm gonna show you a example of a photograph I just took recently with the Anafi 4K drum. Coffee time. I think we are about to hit 23 minutes. Yeah, and I think right about this point I got that 10% warning, so I brought her down. This comes down a lot gentler than the Bebop 1 and Bebop 2. Okay, so we are back. Let me go ahead and reach back here for this big old, almost 13 by 19. As you guys know, I run a photo printing channel, mostly about regular photography, nothing too much about aerial, but we're getting into that pretty heavily lately. And this is the result. This is straight out of the camera. Again, remember, this is a huge print. And I don't know whether I have autofocus enabled, but let me see if I can get up real close and still remain in focus. The quality is fantastic. You can't really see, but you can actually, if I hold this to my eyeballs, I can see the stop sign and I can read the word stop on there. So again, really, really nice. Now, for those of you who know printers, I did that on the Pro 100 from Canon in Pro Luster Paper in Precision Color Signature Edition inks for it. And so the results are fantastic. I am I am tickled pink. Now, there is a bit of curvature distortion. And uh, one of the things that I didn't touch on is the fact that you can zoom in and out. Now, how do you get away with that? Because really, it's not an optical zoom. It's a digital zoom. Well, remember I told you that the photos and certain settings on video do not use up the whole sensor? Okay, that's how it does it. When you shoot DNG, you use up the whole sensor. When you shoot JPEG, you actually use a smaller portion of that sensor, and you can then magically zoom in and out, basically taking more in of that capacity or the pixel capacity of that sensor. So really ingenious. Again, they're not manufacturing new pixels. They're actually utilizing pixels that were not being used. It's really fantastic. And uh, you can do that during flight. You can also set the button that controls the zoom to control exposure. So it's either one. So usually if I'm going to fly and I know I'm not going to be zooming in and out, I'll set that button for basically my, my uh, exposure control. And so if I see a warning, I have the app set to warn me if I have any blown highlights. When I take off, I can see the zebra lines on anything that is blown over white. I will quickly bring that down by just simply maneuvering that little button. And you can do that on the fly as you go. And then you can begin and perform you whatever flight mission you wanted to accomplish. Again, what I try to do when I fly is I set my shots and then I stop, I move around, position myself to the next position and perform that shot. The worst thing that people do, and I see so many videos like this, is that they're doing a flight, right? Oops, I, I meant to go left and they don't edit that out, you know, and they do it to music. Yeah. So again, I'm going to do videos about how I go about editing my videos to give you a nice 
Uh, and I'm getting better at it. I'm not going to be a critic. I'm not going to be criticizing people. But if you see a really professionally created aerial video, you know what I'm talking about. It is just fluid, flawless. No abrupt motion, nothing, no change of direction in the middle of the beat of a measure of music, if you will. I majored in music, by the way. So, you know, it's just an art that you learn and something that you will not learn right away. You have to practice, practice, practice. My earlier videos, pfft, atrocious. I got better as I went along. And again, this is something that I had never tried before. All right, I think I kept you long enough already. So please continue to watch these. We'll be back with more stuff. Of course, we'll be back on the printer side of things with a lot more videos as well. I got a new product from Precision Colors. It's an additional ink for the Pro 100 ink set. We're going to go ahead and test that and we'll give you the results. All right. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share and like. Happy printing. Happy flying as well. Until the next time. Bye-bye.